By now, everyone knows the heartbreaking details of the Christchurch massacre in New Zealand, where 50 people were murdered in cold blood in their houses of worship, with one as young as three years old. The shooter sickly live-streamed his attack while making reference to a number of 4chan memes, and there has since been debate about his 74-page manifesto and to what extent different claims were true or were meant to stir up controversy. In other words, to what extent he was trolling in his manifesto for murder. But what does it mean to troll when you are actually committing the acts? How is it possible to be taken in by parts of his manifesto when, at the end of the day, these are things that he actually said and wrote right before committing mass murder? As Robbie Martin aptly puts it in a Media Roots episode, It's both a troll and deadly serious at the same time. We're living in a new era. People are killing people and being ironic while they're doing it. Recently in Toronto, we witnessed a stomach-turning, in-real-life form of faux trolling at the Unite Against Racism rally and the memorial for the Christchurch victims in Nathan Phillips Square. Hundreds of people came out to listen to performances, learn about the work of various organizations in Toronto, and to pledge to stand against bigotry and injustice in all forms. Faith Goldie, Toronto's own Wicked Wench of the North, showed up to ostensibly join? the anti-racist solidarity movement by running up behind the stage and provocatively holding up signs saying it's okay to be white and hashtag not all white men yelling freedom of speech. She smugly says, what's the problem? I'm not saying it's better to be white. I'm saying it's okay to be white. Okay, right, Faith? You see, I was actually being anti-racist with my message. I'm here in solidarity with the anti-racist protesters and therefore Muslims. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Who's the racist now? But again, the idea of trolling loses all meaning when you actually act in accordance with the views that you're coding with your troll. If you don't know who Faith Goldie is, hallelujah, life is good. I would just turn this off right now and keep that train rolling. If you have heard of her, it's likely been in relation to her less than savory, and that's being generous, far-right views. Be they anti-feminist, anti-abortion, anti-immigrant, anti-indigenous, anti-black, anti-Muslim, and often coded anti-Semitic, although she claims that she can't actually be anti-Semitic or even racist at all because she supports the apartheid state of Israel, as if there aren't loads of reasons why ethno-nationalists and Islamophobes actively support the IDF, but I digress. So who is Faith? She started out on Conservative Sun News Network and then joined Rebel Media, which is like Canada's Breitbart. She believes in the Great Replacement or White Genocide Conspiracy Theory and is terrified of becoming a minority in her own country. Never mind that it never actually belonged to her ancestors, who are Ukrainian and Greek not indigenous. So even if you made the racist assertion that the land theft of the British and the French was somehow legitimate, which would still be wrong, you know, Britain, Greece, Ukraine, what's the difference? Sure, my ancestors immigrated here, but I, I look white, so this must be mine. If you're watching this video and you do believe in the Great Replacement or white genocide, I'd very much recommend watching Sean's incredible in-depth debunking of this. Here's the picture of the draft. And now here's the dog, and would you look at that, we've got both. They're both still there, nothing's been replaced, you know, they both just are there now. Do you follow? But moving on, she believes that minority groups should abandon their cultures and assimilate to white identity, and she doesn't believe that other cultures should have ethnic enclaves that can be found around Toronto, such as Chinatown, Koreatown, Greek Town. While she states publicly that she is not a racist or a white supremacist, she openly promotes neo-Nazi YouTube channels and advocates for platforms that endorse Nazi ideology. Faith was fired from Rebel Media after she went down to the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville and live-streamed the event, speaking favorably about the people marching with tiki torches, shouting, We will not be replaced and Jews will not replace us, on the neo-Nazi Daily Stormer's Crypto Report podcast. In a conversation with Chris Robertson of Millennial Woes, Fake spoke about the great conversation happening after Charlottesville and that it clarified the direction of the dissident right. She even repeated the 14 words, a pro-white creed reading, we must secure the existence of our people in a future for white children. 
This sentence was created by David Lane, a well-known white supremacist and member of supremacist terrorist group, The Order, who coined this phrase while serving jail time for killing a Jewish man and also for several armed robberies. The number 14 is one of the most common ways of self-identifying as a white supremacist and is often seen tattooed on the forearms of Klan members. Faith said, I don't see why that's controversial. Is that bad? I think it's controversial to say the opposite. And as for the 14 words, nothing about them is exclusionary whatsoever. It doesn't say we support one group, but not the other. They all have to go. One conservative critic of Faith Goldie, who I would not expect to agree with at all, said, when you consciously decide to associate yourself with a certain movement and employ their catchphrases, you don't get to pretend to be stunned and offended when someone points out the association. Perhaps the ultimate association, her fiancé Joseph Weisner, was kicked out of his private all-boys high school for participating in a chat group that glorified the Holocaust and was full of anti-Semitic slurs where people were posting photos of victims in gas chambers. Through a lawyer, Weisner states that he is not and has never been anti-Semitic, but one former classmate said, I wasn't really surprised when I heard Faith's extremist views, and that's because I knew Joe. In February of last year, Faith posted a collage of Joe on Instagram saying, to the guy who makes my politics sound lefty. And of course, they're both still virgins at 30, because nothing screams relativism more than being a thought. Or maybe is it not having any white babies by 30? So, girl, come on. You don't have to say anything about white supremacy on your signs. Your actions tell us that you are not here in solidarity with the anti-racist protesters. You're hiding in plain sight. Yeah, we, we see you. Putting aside that it's okay to be white is only barely coded at all, golly, thank goodness you were able to reassure the dozens of white males who were in the crowd participating in the event, lest they start to broflake out during the few hours we were paying attention to, you know, the memorial for the people who were killed for not being white? You'd think that somebody fighting so hard for free speech would have something marginally instructive or compelling to say. Maybe taking a look at why it's actually so spectacularly okay, better than okay, to be white in this settler colonial capitalist economy. Why white people have staggeringly lower rates of suicide than indigenous peoples as they reap the economic benefits of stolen land. Why white people with the exact same resumes as their black counterparts are hired at double the rate. In fact, a white man with a criminal history is more likely to be hired than a person of color with no criminal past, even though they both have the same qualifications. Why white neighborhoods have more supermarkets leading to lower food costs? They pay less in auto insurance, even if they are assessed to pose the exact same risk. They are three times more likely to attend a low poverty school, regardless of income. Or how about why they are far less likely to be harassed, falsely arrested, or straight up murdered by the police, even though white people consistently have higher rates of contraband possession? Or how about why immigration happens within this global political economy in the first place? How was the global self produced, and how is it actively, continually reproduced through aid in reverse and structural adjustment policies? How about how Western and specifically US foreign policy and imperialism actively destroyed entire regions of the world, installing dictators that would be amenable to Western business interests, forcing millions of people to flee their homes for survival? We know that 9-11 itself was in part a response to US foreign policy, and that the institutionalization of racism and Islamophobia serves geopolitical interests. The interests of the neocons, the political think tank class, who seek to maintain and spread US neoliberal hegemony around the world. Which, by the way, is the reason why the white working class is feeling particularly disenfranchised as of late. In order for profits to be made, for accumulation to continue, there needs to be a continually perpetuated and growing underclass of people who will have no other options but to do the low paying jobs that no one else wants to do, but which keep our society functioning. This is how it works. And so although a lot of white nationalists like to hearken back to the good old days, this is our economy. This is where it's heading. Inevitably, more and more people are going to be pulled into this underclass of super exploited workers, especially as capitalists automate more and more of all of our jobs. You can either recognize what is truly threatening to all working class people and unite, 
or you can continue fighting for a system that will only continue to disenfranchise you just to churn out profits. What I notice when reading a lot of comments and posts from self-proclaimed white nationalists or fascists is the extreme alienation that they're all feeling under capitalism and how incredibly toxic toxic masculinity has been for them because it's made them feel like failures if they're not alpha males. There's a real obsession with being big boys and protecting women and the homeland. Honestly, they're crying out for community. And if they could only understand that this is the same alienation that's being felt by so many people under these systems, then they would have their community and actual realistic, sensical, viable solutions to their problems. As I was editing this, Faith was actually banned from Facebook and Instagram, so let's hope she follows in the footsteps of Milo and Alex Jones, who are now quite irrelevant laughing stocks. But sidebar, if you want to see a great video about how edgy humor can draw people towards extremist violence, check out the PewDie Pipeline by Noncompete. And hey, maybe it's time that we take back a little irony too, huh? I'm going to show up at the next Unite the Right rally with a sign saying it's okay to be anti-fascist and see how many people respect my free speech. Oh, that kid's MAGA hat got snatched purely for the lulls, man. You got mad? We just want to bring in all the refugees to troll you trad wives. Thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of my patrons and super special shout out to Chris and Ian Chartier. If you'd like to support the continuation of these videos, you can become a monthly patron donor or toss me a one-time donation via PayPal. Please like and share because I know the algorithm is not going to favor this. Come chat to me on Facebook and Twitter and I will see you in another video.